Welcome to our lecture online. So let's take another look at the Dirac delta function. Again, remember it's not really a function, but that's what we call it. On the previous video, we defined it as being zero everywhere except for one value at x when x equals zero, the function becomes infinite. A better way to define it is when we integrate over the function from negative infinity to infinity, although we don't have to go out quite that far on the limits because it's only infinite when we get to zero, so we could actually go from point one, from negative point one to positive point one. Over the Dirac delta function, when we integrate, we get one, and that's a much more important concept or definition for the Dirac delta function. But let's take another look at how we can get a feel for that function. Well, let's say we have a function called function one, that is equal to 1 between x equal negative 5, negative 0.5 to x equal plus 0.5. Notice that the area of this is equal to 1 because the width is 1 and the height is 1. So when we integrate over that function, we do get 1. But now let's make it a little bit more skinny. Let's say that the height is equal to 2 and we go from minus 1 quarter to plus 1 quarter. Again, the area is equal to 1. So when we integrate over this function, let's call it function 2, we still get 1. Well, let's go take it one step further, and let's say that now the height is equal to 100, and the width starts at minus 1 over 200 to plus 1 over 200. Notice that the width is therefore 1 over 100. When we multiply the times the height, again, we get 1. In other words, if we define this as function 3, and then we integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity over the function, we still get 1. We get 1 every single time. So what is the Dirac delta function? Well, we keep on making it less wide, skinnier. We keep on making it taller in such a way that we now integrate from minus epsilon to plus epsilon all the way to one over two, over, one over two times epsilon. Again, the area of this will equal one. It doesn't matter what these values are as long as the height is equal to this. Let's call that function four. We integrate over the function. We still get one. So in the limit, if we let epsilon go to zero, then one over two epsilon will go to infinity and the area of that function will still equal one. So we can define the Dirac delta function, which is written like this, as the limit as epsilon goes to zero of one over two epsilon. Essentially, yes, that is how we define the Dirac delta function for all values of x. We take the absolute value sign so that the absolute value sign of x is less than or equal to epsilon. So that is by definition the Dirac delta function. We just keep on making it skinnier so that the height goes to 1 over 2 epsilon. And let's see, yes, that's what the Dirac delta function is because that represents the height. And when epsilon goes to 0, this will become infinite. And of course, that's how we define the Dirac delta function. So it always puzzled me when I first was introduced to this concept to say, well, didn't we just say that there's no width of the delta function, that it's zero everywhere except when x equals zero? And that is true. So why bother with some small amount of width from minus epsilon to plus epsilon? Well, again, we use that concept in mathematics so we could then take the limit and let epsilon go to zero, which then means that the height becomes infinite. So just another way of looking at the Dirac delta function. So hopefully this, when you follow that, we go from here, to there, to there, to there, and ultimately you let the width go to zero, height becomes infinite, that is what the Dirac delta, fun Dirac delta function is in the limit when epsilon goes to zero, and that is how it's done.